Hello and welcome back to another book review. Today we are reviewing the book Sex Boomy. Sex Boomy by uh, Travanian. And uh, this Travanian character is a very uh, a sexual man, which I like very much because um, very sexual. And uh, this book was made in the 70s, actually, but, uh, yes, let's see, when was the date? I'm trying to see what the date was. 1979 was when, uh, this book was released by this Travanian character. And, uh, so I guess I will uh, tell you a little bit about the book and... You can decide for yourself what you think about uh, this man in this book. This book about this uh, assassin, Hell. Yes, his name is Hell. And uh, let's see. So when the book starts off, Shabumi, Sex Boomy, the book starts off where uh, this Hell character is uh, his young boy. That's in the past, though. It starts off really in an airport where this uh, spy agency... So it's a book about spies. This spy agency, the mother company, Diamond, who is in charge of this operation, commits a whole uh, killing a bunch of people in an airport thing. And uh, one of the people who is supposed to kill gets away. A girl, Hana, with two N's and an H at the end. So spelled the same way forward as it is backward. That's Hana. She's a semi-important character, although the book is about hell, so we shouldn't get too distracted on Hannah. But Hannah escapes this uh, devastation from the mother company, Diamond, and decides to go visit her father's friend. Her father is dead, but her father had a friend, Hell. So Hannah will go visit Hell in Basque. But we'll get back to that in a bit. Look at Diamond. Diamond himself is a very uh, interesting character. He lives in a underground dungeon or something, or basement mausoleum. I don't know. Uh, he has um, he has his assistant who does research for him. He has two assistants, but one of them is a specialist in computers, and he they have a supercomputer, Fat Boy, and Fat Boy is a supercomputer that can do anything. And, but you need to know exactly how to do it, and only his one uh, assistant is able to do that well. So his one assistant is very good at finding things on Fat Boy. His other assistant, a uh, buxom female, uh, assists him in his day-to-day -day bathing, whatever else he may need, I guess. Uh, this Diamond character, you know, he's a very busy man. And, uh, and uh, so he is chasing after Hannah. So we get back to Hannah. Hannah goes to Basque, and in looking for Hannah, Diamond and the mother company, Fat Boy, they, uh, they realize that Hell is going to become involved in this whole escapade. And then the rest of the book is actually just about Hell's personal life, childhood, and upbringing all the way to present day. So, for a lot of the book, we're going to learn more about this Hell character. Hell was raised in Japan, but he is not Japanese. His mother is a Russian, and his father was German. Or maybe his mother was half Russian, half German. Anyway, he's Russian and German, and maybe some other things, other European things. But he was raised in Japan, and... His mother was a very about-the-town kind of a girl, so that's why she was able to make her way in Japan with her son. Single mother. So she raised her son uh, singly in Japan, and uh, one time during the war, actually, their house that they were staying at was taken over by the Japanese government, and a general came and stayed with them. And um, at first, the general resisted Hell's beautiful mother's advances, but eventually could not resist. And 
they became an item, and the general, this Japanese general, became kind of a father figure to Hell. So in their time together, the general realized that Hell was actually a super genius boy. He was a super genius boy who was an excellent Go player without any training in Go, the most uh, advanced game in the world, even more advanced in chess, according to Travanian. Um, a game that requires subtlety. Not only was Hell a super genius, he also realized he was psychic. So Hell, our psychic super genius, is playing Go with our general. Mother uh, dies eventually, and um, Hell goes into the caretaking of just the general. The general, of course, does not have time to take care of Hell properly. So the general sends Hell to his friend's abode, who his friend is a master Go player. So Hell is raised the rest of his youth in a Go Dojo type place where he, you know, learns to perfect his Go plane and he also, uh, he loses his virginity to a beautiful young Go player girl. And then, uh, and then he leaves and uh, I guess they never speak again. Hell goes on to go to the city. He's poor, um, when he, but he is a man now, so he must find work. He uh, meets a new lady. This lady is at uh, works at the Federal Bureau or something, American something, and um, they start getting it on. And out of I guess gratitude for his. Uh, his acceptance of her and his loyalty. She gets him uh, two fake passports, one a fake Russian passport and one a fake American passport. So now he has two fake passports and no real passports. But with those fake passports, he's finally able to get a job. And he gets a job as a code breaker working for the Americans in Japan as a code breaker. Uh, he moves on from this girl and she's never mentioned again. And now... Um, now, he, he is making good money, this Hell character. So he is, he is making good money as a code breaker for the Americans. And he gets a house. He gets a house and he gets some homeless people to live with him. He gets an old lady who was apparently homeless and now she lives with him. A man who was homeless or something. And, now, and then he moved in with, with Hell as well. The old man became like kind of a caretaker. The lady would go out and do cooking and get groceries. So now they have a little family in their little house that Hell has. Uh, and then two young twins, um, young twin girls, come and join him off the streets. And they're very grateful. So they start having a, a three-way. And every night they will pleasure Hell after he comes home from his day of code breaking and the Americans... Japanese something or other. And they go about this for a while. During this time, Hell also discovers his interest in cave diving, spelunking. So he's now doing that. Um, this is all very important. But um, eventually, Hell finds out that his father figure, the general, the admiral, general, he's um, been taken prisoner. He is kind of... Uh, He's being used as a political piece in this game of war, and they are going to put him on trial and execute him as a political criminal. So Held goes and visits him in the jail, and doing the nicest thing that he does that he could think of for this man so he can maintain his sense of Japanese honor. He assassinates his father figure. Uh, Hell is also an assassin. So Hell is uh, an assassin trained in the naked kill. A uh, form of assassination. I guess he must have learned this at the dojo or something. I can't quite remember where he learned it, but he's an assassin as well. So he's an assassin. He gets taken to jail himself because, you know, he did it in plain sight of the guards. You know, everyone knows he assassinated his father now. So now he's got to uh, kind of pay for his crimes. And he goes to jail for a while. He's stuck in solitary confinement because he's a very dangerous man. Very dangerous man. And uh, he goes into solitary confinement where uh, he gets tormented by American 
policemen, American guards, political figures, whatnot. And uh, he does that for a while until eventually he gets out of jail because they want to use him as an assassin. So now Hell is an assassin working for the government or something. And his first order of business as an assassin is he murders all the people who tormented him in uh, jail. He's a very vengeful person, this Hell. And, uh, and then he goes on to a life of assassination, which um, Trevanian does not think was important enough to get into into great detail, but he spends his entire life being an assassin, I guess, and making a lot of money. So, Hell has a lot of money now in his older years, when we get finally back to present day with Hannah and Diamond and the mother company and Fat Boy. So now we are in present day, and... The middle, we're now getting into the middle of the book as well, and... <sighs> we're now getting into... We're now getting into present day as well. Now, in present day, uh... Trevanian decided to spend most of the book speaking about uh, spelunking. Good middle portion of the book is spent cave diving with Hell's close friend, La Caget, a Baskian mythical figure who lives for women and drinking and revelry and all that kind of thing. So him and Lakaget, they're cave diving in a cave system that has never before been discovered. And so Hell and Lakaget go into this cave system. They determine not only that it has not been discovered, but that with sufficient gear, they could swim out the bottom in an underground river and emerge. So, they're excited about this, but unfortunately, um, their plans for exploration and cartographing new caves for the Spelunking community, which they are very passionate about, uh, their plans are interrupted by this Hannah, who finally shows up. So she shows up at Hell's Castle, because Hell lives now in a castle on top of a mountain in Basque, and she shows up at Hell's castle. So Hell lives in a castle with his uh, his long-term girlfriend uh, escort, Hana. Hana, not to be confused with Hannah. Hana is spelled with one N and no H at the end. So Hannah is spelled with two N's and an H at the end, whereas Hana is just H-A-N-A. -A. And Hana is a hooker. But... Trevanian makes it very clear that Hana is Hell's life partner, partner, because she is the only one who can satisfy his advanced sexual needs, this Hana character. So they have all kinds of erotic adventures together. And at this point also, uh, Trevanian feels it's important to get more into detail about Hell's uh, understanding of the sexual world, for to hell, you know, there are many types of people who have sex. And um, there's four stages of a sexual person. You know, uh, beyond just being a stage, I guess would be stage zero, be total virgin. Stage one, virgin, would just be a simple lovemaker. With the, I'll read it to you. Uh, stage one, lovemaking, that healthy and simplistic stage of sexual curiosity during which strong young animals brew with the impulse to continue their species exercise themselves on one another's bodies. So that's stage one. That's a simple sex. But then we get to stage two. It gets a little more advanced, this, this concept of sex. During his brief stage, sojourn in stage two, the use of sex as a psychological aspirin. So sex is now a drug. That's a stage two sexual person. As a social narcosis, narcosis. A kind of bloodletting to reduce fevers and pressures. So at this point, sex has become a sport, you know. So now, sex three. Stage three. Sexual gourmandizing. That is a stage three. Not at the highest stage of sex, but it is one of the truly uh, expert levels of sex at this point, I think. This point uh, is the highest stage ever reached by Westerners. You know, Japanese people are more advanced than Westerners in sex, but Westerners only ever get to stage three, apparently. So, uh, the highest stage ever reached by Westerners, and indeed by most Orientals as well, so that's good to know, you know, if you only get to stage three, don't feel bad. 
it's fine. Not everybody can be as advanced as hell. Uh, this is sexual gourmandizing. Uh, with high appetite. Young, strong, and taut. Imagine fertile. And it doesn't really explain what it is. But oh, Even while in sexual smorgasbord of stage 3, hell began to experiment. Where is this? This is not... None of this is very descriptive. Well, sexual gourmandizing. We know what sexual gourmandizing is. It's like gourmet sexual meals, you know, like... Lamb. Something. Beef ragu. So, stage four. We'll move on from that, because there's no description of it, apparently. Stage four. Now, this is the most important stage. Kikashi sex. Uh, this is where because sex becomes a game between two opponents. This could only be played with another stage four lovemaker. That's why it's so hard to achieve. And only when both were feeling particularly strong. The game was played in a small room, about six satami. Both players dressed in formal kimonos and knelt facing one another, their backs against opposite walls. Each, through concentration alone, was required to come to the verge of climax and to hover there. No contact was permitted, only concentration and such gestures as could be made with one hand. The object of the game was to cause climax before climaxing yourself, the ultimate in sex, sport, opposition. Travanian, he knows how to make long lists about what sex is, so that's very sexy of him. So anyway, we're moving on from uh, that description. Now we can understand a little bit more into Hell's psyche. That's why that's important. But uh, so now Hana has visited and uh, they have a whole thing. Uh, Hell decides to take Hana, ha Hana with two N's and one H, to the safe house. Um, because he wants to protect her. He decides to protect her because he's friends with her father, even though her father's dead. They used to work together in assassination things. So he takes Hannah to the safe house, where, uh, you know, it's a, it's a day's journey away in the Basque Mountains. It's a very safe, futuristic facility with sight that can see all along the mountains. If there's anyone coming, she will be able to hold off an army. And there, you know, he shows her the, the safe cupboard, shows her the way of the land. And they make love in the evening. And she falls in love with him. She wants to make flowers for his head. But he has to go. So he leaves her in the safe house alone. She dies. She, she gets murdered uh, by, the, by the diamond and the mother company. Um, but at least she got to live one last moment of ecstasy before her death. So I guess in that way, her life had meaning. And now Hell is on his own again. He's back at home. Uh, and he realizes he needs to do something with his mother company because they're coming for him. So at this point, Hell decides to go off and um, meet up with his uh, informant. His informant, the gnome, is uh, known by the mother company, but nobody can seem to lo locate him. Nobody can find his location. So... Hell goes and meets the gnome. He gives him some information about a Kennedy assassination or something that he can use as leverage against the government. And then, um, you know, the gnome is going, but, uh, you know, he's not sure about his, his, you know, his safety for some reason. And uh, he, so he asks uh, Hell to have sex with his wife so that she can experience pleasure um, because Hell is an expert lovemaker, of course, and you know, very coveted by husbands all over the world, I'm sure. Then, uh, then Hell goes and goes to an airplane, kills a bunch of people. He uh, goes and stays at another safe house with another friend of his. This pl safe house has placed two daughters now. Very, very tender, welcoming daughters, known for this. But, um, Hell refuses them. He doesn't want them. But his friend, his friend, um, entertains them both with, uh, sexual lovemaking, the entire time that they're there. So uh, nobody was left disappointed, which is, I think, very, um, very noble. And then, uh, and then he leaves, he goes, uh, he goes cave diving again, hides in his cave that he found with the Kaget. 
Um, but while they're there, they get, uh, turns out Diamond knew about it the whole time, actually. It was no secret at all. Thought it was going to be a race secret, but it was no secret. So they're in the cave again, and then they just kind of get blocked in. They try a thing to save Lakaget because he's strangling on the wire or something, and uh, it doesn't work, and Lakaget just kind of falls to the bottom of the cave and dies. And then uh, Hell is on his own in the cave with the scuba diving gear so he can get out, but it's going to be very dangerous because... He's never done it before, and he does not have Lakaget's help to spelunk through the underground river, which has a very high current. So, he has no choice now. Diamond knew about the cave, but Diamond did not know about the secret underground river. So, Diamond thinks Hell is through, but Hell has a secret back door. And he takes the current, and he gets knocked out, and he has to detach himself from the uh from his air tank while he's down there because he gets stuck in the current the the extreme tides are pushing him through the rocks but his air tank gets stuck behind a rock and he can't fit his body and the air tank through it so he has to detach his air tank in the underwater river and so now he's just being washed through the river with no air but at the last moment he finds his way out and survives so lakaget is dead as i said and hell is now uh, free once again. Nobody's knowledge. <clears throat> he returns home, and uh, his castle has been destroyed. His lands have been seized by the government. His Swiss funds and his Swiss bank account also seized by the government. So uh, he's basically broke now. Um, but he instructs his um, landsmen to. Uh, to start finding people because they're going to rebuild the castle again. But not before Hell goes to the government, the American government, and tells them about the information that he got from the gnome about the Kennedy assassination. And using that information to blackmail the government because they don't, they don't want uh, that kind of a mess apparently. Uh, I don't think it implicates them with the with it. Maybe it does. It doesn't really get into detail about what happened with the Ken Kennedy assassination. Only that the government doesn't really want people to know about it. And they are willing to pay hell very handsomely for it. And they're also willing to just give, um, give him the lives of the people that were being a nuisance to him throughout the book. This, uh, this organization does not care much about human life. For instance, on the airplane afterward, um, the whole airplane was full of operatives, actually. The whole airplane was full of operatives when he was murdering people on the airplane. And then they just killed all those operatives on their own for some reason. So, they're very secretive and they just like killing people. So they say, okay, you can kill Diamond uh, and the Arab guy and also uh, Star, who are some other people that were working with Diamond. And um, he said, good, okay. So... Uh, you will tell them that you show them the information I'm giving you now about the Kennedy assassination. And then he will be like, oh, that's a big deal. And uh, then you'll say, yes, that's why you need to go alone with Star and the Arab guy to the Basque region once again. And um, that's where he is and you need to take care of this. And so then they go there and it's a trap set by Hell. And... Um, Hell murders them. He assassinates them in the in the mist, the the heavy fog that exists there, and uh, he he does the fog, and uh, he kills them in the fog, and then he goes home and starts rebuilding his castle. He gets his land back in Wyoming, so he has land in Wyoming. He, the government's okay. You can have that back, um, and also you can have your money back. So Hell gets everything back, and uh, as long as as long as this candy information does not get out to the public, Hell's identity and Hell's security will be safe. But after that, who knows what will happen. Um, so, uh, you know, Hell goes back and begins rebuilding his castle. But, uh, you know, it, it may, may not happen in his lifetime that it will be rebuilt. But he wants to do it anyway. He does that, and uh, the book ends with him making love to his now... Uh, his, his hooker girlfriend, Hannah, with one N and no H's at the end. 
And uh, she's blind now. She got blinded by the fire in the castle. So she has no eyesight. But uh, she's still an excellent lovemaker. And that is what is important. And that is what Sex Bumi is about. So I hope you learned something today about this book. It's a, it's a fairly decent read. And uh, obviously, you know, has some very um, important things that you can learn about the world. Cave diving. Um... And what not go maybe, so uh, yeah, so I you know maybe maybe recommend if you feel like um, reading about this. It's not too bad anyway. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and all that, and uh, I will see you next time.